Hey, and welcome back to The Calling here in Las Vegas. I'm Tanner Grace, and I'm joined by Armada. Armada, what a match here to decide one of our other finalists. I'm still, I'm still breathing it off. This is, that, was, that was incredible. There's no way those things happen. It doesn't even matter. I, I, I thought the big pivotal moment was just straight up destroying Urser, but it doesn't even matter because having double snag turns stopping all the rift mines, oh, yeah. it didn't even matter that Urser got destroyed. It wouldn't have affected a thing. That was phenomenal play by Tyler, and it pushes him into the finals. Absolutely, and I was kind of outside watching it with, with the fans, everybody watching at the feature match area, and there was multiple times, it felt like a real, like, you know, real-life sporting event that you're at, and everybody was like, oh, oh, like, you know, there's, there's some palpable energy with it, and then I could see you guys, and then if you check my Twitter at home, you'll see a little picture that I took backstage of, uh, of y'all while you were doing commentary, and you couldn't even stay in your seat. I could not help it. I was standing up and talking, and if, if anything crazy like that happens, I may do that again during this match because this is this is for everything. Absolutely. This is for first place at the Calling Las Vegas, and it comes to this. It's going to be incredible. Oh, absolutely. So, like you said, this is going to be the finals. This is the last match. This is for everything. This is for all the marbles. This is for you getting to call yourself the first champion of this major calling in the United States. And here you see the bracket all the way to the end. And here we are with... Kind of a little bit of an upset, though I'm starting to believe maybe not so much that Tyler here made it into the finals. I really, really loved his quarterfinals matchup. And then his semifinals matchup just showing that maybe this is the deck that starts to change that narrative of change as being the absolute best deck. I don't know how anyone could watch the stream today and not say that Tyler is by far the most complete Prism player and Prism is so strong when piloted well. It, it, the, the writing, the proof is there. I don't know how it, it, anyone could say it. If you do, perhaps reconsider, because I have seen time and time again today, even at yesterday, that his play and Prism, the things that she can do, are very, very amazing. All right, well, enough about Prism. Let's talk about the deck that the Prism deck is going to be going up against. This yes. is the chain deck going to be played by Sebastian Calvalo in the finals here. And again, this is one of the ones that we've seen a couple times today. Pretty normal all the way through, though. We do see some trimmers in here, and we do see these Razor Reflexes, which have been pivotal in some of his matches here today. And you know, not only that, this deck has tech for chain. We have Lunar Tide Plunderer, three of them red, which is another way to pop Phantasms. I don't think I've ever seen that put into a chain list, ever. Yeah, so we got a lot of ways to actually prop, sorry, block profitably, a little more so than normal chain decks, so that could definitely come up. So let's take a look at that chain deck, I'm sorry, that prism deck that we're talking about from Tyler that you and I have been hyping almost all this weekend. I know Red Zone Rogue himself has been loving it. I have actually fallen in love. This has stolen my heart this weekend. Yeah, I mentioned it a few rounds ago um, that we. I want to go home, I want to take this deck list, I'm going to steal it, I'm going to build it, I'm going to play it to the ground. And uh, yeah, there's a reason, uh, because it's doing very well in the hands of a very capable pilot. Well, let's see how well that fairly capable pilot's gonna do here in the finals. We are ready to start our final match here this weekend, playing for everything, that first place prize, that amazing tunic, that money, and what, probably the most important, that prestige. Yeah. Uh, I do want to point this out. This is very interesting. These are not the top two seeds. This is seed number three and seed number four. They fought their way all the way through to this point, and Chain's starting us off by making a Soul Shackle. A big surprise. So it's kind of what he does, right? Absolutely. Now, this is, you know this is a control matchup, right? You know that the deck's going to be stacked up a little bit more than normal. <laughs> you're going to have you're gonna have cards in that are made for it. <laughs> Tyler just starts, hey, by the way, I'm at 43. Just to keep every, yeah. everybody apprised of the situation, you can go ahead and Arsenal. Uh, by the way, he does not play anything, uh, you know, super extra spicy, which would have even you know, just driven the point home even more. And yeah, back to my point a little bit, you're going to see these players play a little differently in the first couple of turns, especially the chain player where, you know, we've talked about this quite a bit early that you're going to be paying close attention to what they pitch for a resource here because those cards are going to be happening again in this game. They are for yeah. sure getting through their entire deck. And there it is, Lunar Tide Plunderer coming across, destroying here, and you have a question and the question is, is Phantasmal Footsteps going to be pitched and come into play so that you can uh, follow this up with another Herald attack? The answer is no. It's going to Arsenal and pass. All right, on to turn two. Sebastian here. And it looks like that is a big, 
big banish here. That is wow. A that is gone and not going to be able to be cast this, this game. Turn two, one shackle, and you hit the Art of War. But it doesn't matter because you're just going to play Shadow Puppetry into just the biggest, most giant Enlightened Strike. Just Enlightened Strike for eight, most likely. No, he's going to draw the card. Enlightened Strike for six and draw a card is an interesting choice, threatening more damage on this turn. Now what makes you choose that instead of doing just you know more damage ahead? You know you want to get a card deeper into your deck. Well, if he allows if he allows this to hit, uh, you do get to look at the top card and banish. And so for oh you know what it doesn't mean, doesn't even matter because fate foreseen from Arsenal says no you're you're not going to hit here unless you show me a red razor reflex. But if you do manage to hit here, you could banish something off the top and you could continue attacking, um, continue doing some some really powerful plays. Looks like Tyler kept the card on top there. Another thing to look out for. Probably a good one here for an early game stuff in the matchup. It looks like we're going to get an attack from the Blade here. Yep, Shackle 2, Nebula Blade, and he's still threatening stuff. Maybe this is another reason why he wanted to uh, do the draw. He's just going to casually throw down another red fate for scene, saying no, no rune chant for you. Is this something that you like doing from the control side? And abounding. Interesting abounding from hand, ending just for 3 and just free damage. Maybe he just says, that's fine. I'm going to keep a two-card hand. Nope, he's going to pitch a Genesis block one, take two, it looks like. Now, in these kind of matchups, when you're the control player against Chain, do you like doing this, just blocking as much as you can early enough to just keep your life total as high as possible so you have as much buffer? I don't, know if, late game? I don't know if it's necessary that, that I like it. I think this is just how the hand dictated he played it. He had two red fate for scenes, one in Arsenal, one in hand. It's like, well, I mean, I guess I have to block all of this. And the chain player is like, well, I guess you have to just use your fate for scenes now. And this may look like Tyler's not doing much. You know, he's going to arsenal here and then draw back up to four. But this is part of the game plan. This is what his deck's looking to do here. And it looks like we're going to have another banish. Uh, that Tremors gets gone. Yeah, Tremor of Arathiel not going to be playable from the banish zone. So it moves away. Two so-so uh, banishes. Um, you're okay with the, sh the Shadow of Urser, And you obviously absolutely hate banishing an Art of War. Yeah, taking a look at the discard pile here to maybe rebuy one of these cards with that Shadow of Urser, maybe get some value, put some stuff back into the deck here. Going to kind of play out our turn here from Sebastiano. He's got an Eclipse in hand. This is a weird time to have an Eclipse. This is one of those times where you want to pitch it away. You want it to go to the bottom of the deck. Uh, maybe you consider popping it into... Well, no, you can't really banish it because it, it won't uh, trigger your Shadow of Urser, I don't believe. But he is going to uh, create a Soul Shackle, or sorry, a Rune Chant token here, so that his next attack can threaten two forms of damage. Yeah. Looks like that was a Rift Bind that was going down to get some resources. Like you said, the Rune Chant being made. Now a Soul Shackle token yep. being made. So we're getting up to three now. So these turns are going to start getting a little bit more wide. A lot of things going to be happening. And it looks like the Blade's coming in yet again. And we've talked about this. A lot of the Chain players, they're going to play the first couple turns a little bit slow. And as you see, uh, pitch the Eclipse there to get a couple of resources to That's make sure right, this yeah. is coming up. So setting up for those long games, because here's the thing. It's 40 to 41. You're the aggressive deck as Chain, but you need to start planning now. Yeah, for, for your turn 9 and 10 Soul Shackles that yeah. are 100% happening in this match. This, by the way, is a 1-1 one one pitch, and he blocks the uh, Rune Chant token with one portion of the Genesis, and with the other resource, he's going to use the Phantasmal Footsteps. Then he's coming in with a um, Shadow Reverser. Doesn't look like he banished anything, so this is just pure 2 damage, and he is going to just be very careful, very safe, protect his life total, and block 2. Looks like we're going to get Arsenal there. I think that was another Shadow of Ursa. Uh, Urser into the arsenal, one card left in hand, so we're going to draw back up to four here, draw three, who else? I'm blocking the Feather Walkers yeah. uh, into their hand as well. And this I'm going to try to keep my voice down a little bit because it is a little quiet over here, and I don't want the players to be hearing this since we're watching this live. Ooh, we do have a Herald of Judgment coming across for six. This is one of those moments where if you have the ability to pop that uh, Herald of Judgment, you're really happy. If you don't, and it looks like he doesn't, then he is going to be able to uh, just basically rip two cards from uh, the chain player's hand and you're not happy about that as the chain player generally because you would love to continue to apply some amount of pressure and he hasn't really gotten to do that. Absolutely, so we're going to see what kind of blocks Sebastiano is going to line up here. He looks like he's thinking about it and kind of wants to because like you said, this on hit effect, very powerful in this matchup. It looks like he's going to go 2, 4, 6 because he has less life at 41 to 40. He does have 2 block on the Arcanite Skullcap protecting uh, that using the equipment early is something generally you don't want to do, but here you have to, because the flock you mentioned, you need to pay for the flock 
you need to reveal so that you can create a quicken. And this is one of those kind of give and takes that flock provides. It gives you a quicken, but you have to have the cards in hand. I think this is why you saw some people actually, like some of the you know chain players move away from Flock this weekend, and that's what they were telling me, is it created too many awkward turns, especially early in the game where you might not have had the exact resources you need to do all of the things with the, with the deck. That's I'm sorry, correct. with the card. And this is one of those moments, uh, exactly that, because he had to use equipment blocks, which is something you'd rather probably use later if you lose tempo, and honestly, he doesn't have a ton of tempo on his side yet, but it, it, it's chain. He can grab tempo very quickly. Absolutely, and look, here we go. Maybe the start of one of those tempo-grabbing turns. We have a Seeds getting played from Banish. Looks like we're going to create a Rune Chant token, giving our next play go again, most likely. So maybe a multiple attack wide turn here and some Arcane damage. Looks like we're yeah. going to have a Rift Bind getting pitched here. Or Coming attack. across with the uh, four Ghostly Visit, this is going to trigger that uh, Yellow Seeds because it is a one cost. Um, that four Ghostly Visit is a solid thing. Obviously, that's the one you want to give your uh, Soul Shackle go again to. Um, jamming down the yellow parable of humility to allow you to block uh, with your phantasmal footsteps, stopping all of the damage. Looks like here we go. Here's that flock of the feather walkers that we've been seeing, and here we go. Here's the reveal. Showing a one or less cost, creating a quicken token for next turn. Uh, technically, you could take advantage of the quicken token on uh, the turn it's created, but you have to do some tricky things with like Snapdragon scalers. Yeah, it might be a little early to bring the scalers out here. You might want to save it for one of those huge turns where you're trying to finally push through large, large points of damage, maybe a big rift bind turn. Later Absolutely, in the game. and this is the finals. There is no game after this. Every decision matters. You don't get a do-over. Big draw here. Ooh, two are oh fours my Sebastian goodness! Sigil of Solace coming from Tyler to gain more life, but two. Oh, this is going to be absurd. We're into the Soul Shackle four turn here. If this is a good Soul Shackle, we could have a massive turn. So far, not so bad. Oh, not wow. So he, good. he whiffed hard on this. But it doesn't matter because he can just come across with two Art of Wars. If he has an attack action in hand, which it looks like he does, he can banish it. He can draw two. He can banish. He can draw two. He can give plus two to all of his attacks. And oh, by the way, there's already a Quicken token out here. So this we're going to be getting, crazy. Yeah, we're going to be doing some, a lot of go agains here. Uh, this is going to be possibly one of those turns. This is definitely setting up to be one of those turns where you're going to see the chain player really kind of break the parameters of the game. You see a lot of people play one, two, maybe three cards a turn. There's a possibility of five, six, seven cards getting played this turn. Yeah. Everything being buffed. And here we go. We're going to start off with the Arts of Art of War, pitching a seeds for some oh, resources. Oh wow! And, and having a blue seeds to pitch here is is absolutely fantastic because you're floating that resource, so you can do it again. You don't have to dedicate two cards to pitching um, Art of War. You would if you had reds, but he's got a blue. Uh, doesn't have to worry probably about the go again on this one. Yeah, the Quicken Token's going to take care of that, plus you still have the chain activation as well. That's right. Looks Unfortunately, like it's all coming at a turn where it's a little less gas than you'd like, but you're still going to be able, if he chooses to, you're still going to be able to provide a lot of uh, Art of War damage. He could also hold. Exactly. He could spread this out over two turns. Maybe yep. if he feels like he needs to do that with Tyler being at 42, you know, do you want to have just this one big turn and then maybe not have a great turn next or maybe you want to have a good turn followed by a good turn and then you're moving into Soul Shackle 6, you're moving into Soul Shackle 7. Yeah, and he's only got a uh, blue Shadow Averser and a blue Unhallowed Rites in your uh, Banish Zone, so it's not like you're going to get some major, major stuff going on. He is going to sink a card um, off of the Enlightened Strike. He just drew... Was that another a, Enlightened Strike? It was that or it was a Flock of the Featherwalkers. I couldn't really tell. It was definitely one of those cards, not a Shadow card. So we see a double block here this on is the Enlightened Strike. Probably an 8 Enlightened Strike with Go Again because of the Quicken Token. Yep, we still got the Soul Shackle sitting around, possibly with another goal, Go Again this turn. So, oh, there we go. Soul Shackle's going to be activated. I think the Shadow of Ursa is going to finally come out of, yep, there it is, out of the Arsenal. Yep. It's going to be attacking uh, Tyler here. Are we going to see the first damage Dealt down fast 40 in this game. <laughs> well, he was hovering at 39, but then he said, yeah. don't, don't, don't forget, I can gain life. I do run three Sigils of Solace. Looks like we're going to create a Rune Chant token here with the remaining resources. And then out of Banisher comes another Shadow of Urser. And he's setting this up, and he's, he's obviously revealing, because we see his hand, we can see that he's most likely going to arsenal the Art of War and spread the Art of Wars across yeah, I love that idea. It looks like the Tunic uh, resource was used to yeah. use, stop the Arcane damage, and then the last card from hand was used to block the Shadow of Urser. So another good turn for Tyler. He's getting through a lot of these cards without taking a ton of damage. And if you're Sebastiana, maybe, you know, you're thinking, can I get something going here? 
Well, we haven't seen many rift binds, and that's a that's a good sign currently for Sebastian because you know you want to banish those rift binds in those mid shackle turns, uh, like turns right now, really. And there's a red. Oh boy. You you hate to see those last two cards go, but you've got a red rift bind, a red bounding demigod, and, and what looked like a red seeds even, or maybe it was a uh, maybe it's a different uh, card. Nevertheless, you're happy with those banish. Is maybe it's a blue seeds. You're happy with all of that. Yeah, it looks like I, th I think it's a blue seeds. Yeah. And here comes what's likely going to be another Art of War turn. But after this turn, no more Art of Wars. Yeah, this is a great way to kick. This is probably one of the best ways to kick off a turn as a chain player is Art of War. So great there. But like you said, no more left in the deck. But I really like this idea of holding it to make sure your turns are as impactful as possible over the next couple turns, especially into your Soul Cycle 4 and 5 turn. Because you know in 6 and 7, you're going to have the gas that you need, yep. especially the fact that you've missed a decent bit, so there's so much more density in your deck left over. Oh, look at this. He didn't play it to start the thing off. Maybe he's just thinking, I need to wait for even bigger turns because I have done nothing this game. Tyler is more life than the game than when the game began, and I need to stack this up. All right, so uh, this is the thing that you were talking about earlier. He's using a resource point here to stop the arcane damage, but he's going to float ones. That kind of actually can yep. possibly mean there's maybe something coming from the hand here, and that's going to be a sink below here to make a full block, and are we going to use the Sink Below? If he doesn't, I think that screams that there's something in his hand that he wants to play with this remaining resource. It could, it could also just be that he wants to float it for the next attack that comes down so he can Phantasmal it. Wow. wow. We are okay. going to see the Art of War. Okay. In, in, at instant speed, he can basically say, oh, by the way, I am going to deal you damage with this Bounding Demagon. This is going to now be attacking for five instead of four. Right, because since it's a defensive reaction has been played, no more blocks can be added to this chain. So this is the only amount of damage unless there's another defense reaction that can stop right. this. That's right. So this will hit. Uh, there is no relevant on hit trigger here. It already had go again because he did make sa shackle number six going into this. Um, he does do the banish and draw two. Uh, so in a way, this is just a tricky play after the fact that still does affect the attack. And oh, by the way, there's more. We just got that Enlightened Strike. Is this number three Enlightened Strike or number two? I can't quite I think remember. this is number two. So Enlightened Strike, and this is likely for... Are we, are we assuming this is seven? You know, here's what he did. I bet you he chose as the second mode, go again. And uh, didn't worry about the extra plus one damage and didn't worry about pushing one point of damage. And instead just said, I'm going to choose go again. I'm going to uh, do the draw card effect on Enlightened Strike. And I'm going to threaten you for five. And you're going to choose to either take some damage or multi-block with cards from hand. It does look like two damage is going to come across from Tyler here. Because he was originally going to double block this. But he ended up only getting the single block in here. And this does look like an Unhollowed Rise is being Yeah, red played. Unhollowed Rise. So attacking for four. That wonderful break point. Sinking a, a seed to the bottom. This is that turn that we were talking about where you're going to see Chain play so many spells. There's going to be multiple, multiple attacks onto the Chain, and you're going to see so many things going on. Here we go. Here comes some of that equipment and that last card from hand, I think. Yep, there's the uh, pitch, the last resource to use the Phantasmal to block up. Turns over. Everyone passes on over. It's good for him here to pitch that red Rift Bind and set that to the bottom of the deck. It's exactly what you want to be doing. Uh, drawing up. Oh, look at this. He's got a Lunar Tide Plunderer. And he has an, a Command and Conquer in hand, so it does not matter what Tyler plays. If it's a Herald, it's going down. Even even a Herald of Triumph. All right, looks like we got a we got one banish, good banish here so far. Oh, that's a really really bad one. But we did get a Rift Bind, but uh, this was definitely a little bit on the lower end of banishes on six here. A lot wow. of cards going to the discard pile that we might have needed this turn. Even the special. Uh, Soul Reaping has some extra stuff here if cards are in Soul, so a lot of stuff that we yeah. could have lost value on there. That's right. Now, you see down there, he doesn't actually have a card in Soul right now, but um, it has so much utility, and you never want to lose it. Period. It doesn't even matter if they, they can even put a card in Soul. If you can play Soul Reaping in a game, you are much more likely to win said game. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, we've seen this all day long from Tyler where there's been cards going into Soul and being a big, impactful thing in all of his games, and it looks like this is one of the matchups where it's not... That's not exactly his plan. Yeah. And it's, it's weird, too, because, like, technically, as the Prism player, you can usually have sort of carte blanche to just throw down Heralds um, in the early turns against the chain. But because he tried that and saw Lunar Tide Plunderer, maybe he has a read that says, well, there's probably more of those in the deck. I'm going to need to worry about playing. I might as well just play defensively. And it is working out so far. 
Alright, so we see an attack here from Sebastiano. This has got go again, but this is a block on it, so let's see what the next attack's gonna be. And this is going to be the Command and Conquer threatening to get some damage in and possibly get that Arsenal card from Tyler. He's got what, I think two cards left his hand and a couple equipment that can be doing some that can do some blocking here. Yeah. But this is going to force the issue quite a bit, I think. Well, he's just going to play an Arclight Sentinel after the fact, take six damage, not even worry about the Arsenal card getting destroyed or even just dropping six points of health because he was just able to play it out and just be happy, just content with Arclight Sentinel. Honestly, that's probably what he was going to do on his turn anyway. We saw another Command and Conquer making it in Sebastiano's hand, so great blocker if he gets attacked oh, really? by a Herald here or maybe a great attack if we see you know another thing get into the... Into the um, into the arsenal anytime oh, soon. I love here. this. Tick up the tunic to three, and he remembers, oh, yeah, Arclight Sentinel right now, it's a one attack weapon. Do you want to take one? And the answer is probably yes. And then he draws his, his, his four cards and passes back over. Yep. Tyler going to draw up here, and here we go. These are when the turns start getting really, really crazy, and you need these to be powerful, Sir Sebastiano. Oh, my goodness. Look at these. Oh, look at these banishes. These have not been good. Oh, my. Oh, that's all. Is that almost all the plunder runs? I don't know if he has any plunder runs left. He banished seven cards, and six of them are unplayable. This is the epitome of roulette chain. Uh, when chain released, there were people that referred to chain as sort of a roulette wheel. Sometimes you hit big, and when you hit big, you probably win the game. This is the polar opposite we are seeing play out right now. Trimmer of Arathiel into the Arclight Sentinel. Has to go there. Pops, that's going to be the end of the turn. There's no uh, tricky time snap potion, so he just arsenals and passes. Yeah, and it's going to take a very big amount of blood debt here. Now, the way that Tyler's been playing this game, and it might be, have to do with some of the hands that he has, we haven't really seen many attacks from him. So Sebastiano's down to 27 and taking a large, large chunk of his own life total here with blood debt. But if he gets low enough, there might be a turn where Tyler really starts attacking. As, as you see, a, a Herald of Triumph coming in right here. And we know that at this point, there is, there's no way that this actually connects because he has a Lunar Tide. He has the um, Command and Conquer you mentioned earlier. He could just choose one of those two. In this case... Herald has to, the Herald of Triumph has to be blocked by the Lunar Tide because Lunar Tide has seven, and so it still pops. The uh, Command and Conquer had six, so you have to use the Lunar Tide there, but he had it anyway. Speaking of that Command and Conquer, it's going to have a really good target here this turn. Another Arsenal card here from Tyler. He's going to draw up to four and pass the turn back over to Sebastiano. Now, Sebastiano's moving into chain, I'm sorry, into turn eight here is chain, and we're going to be banishing eight cards off the top. I've got to believe this is the turn where he really starts getting some good cards, but that blood that is starting to uh, catch up to him. He's starting to have a ton of cards here in his banana zone. Maybe to get some, get some of them. Those are both the razor reflexes. So there's one left in the deck. Again, more tough banishes, but you know he's doing a really good thing over the past two turns. He said, you know what? If these are the banishes that I'm getting, I'm going to wait on it. I'm going to take the blood debt. I'm going to stack up, and I'm going to have an alpha strike turn. And Absolutely. That's, ex that's exactly what he's doing. Look. Yeah, this looks like this is going to be a big, big turn. And I wonder, how big do you make one single turn? Do you go for all of the gusto, like he said, like an alpha strike turn? Or since Tyler's at 34, do you just try to get as big a turn as you can with leaving yourself at least a little bit possibly for the next turn? I think it really depends on what his deck size is currently and what his hand composition is. Because you're eventually, I mean, with this amount of blood debt cards, like if he doesn't do anything here... He's taking, like, 10 damage down to 17, threatening, like, one attack away from losing a husk. Uh, so I, I do feel like he's going to have to play something out right now. That seems just fairly obvious. Yeah, I, I've got to agree with you there. I think we're getting maybe half the blood debt cards this turn. You know, some at least some amount of them. All right, so definitely going for at least a few of them because we're starting off with the seeds, and if you're doing that, that means we're committing at least to some attacks this turn. And we do see a red rift bind in there and a yellow rift bind in there, and no, that's two red rift binds in Banished and a yellow. So, And we have the um, Snapdragon scalers up, so you can string together all three of these onto one turn and have an absolute, like, 30 damage turn. Yep, you still got chains in around two to give yourself another go again. Lots of options for multiple attacks here this turn for Sebastiano. Let's see how he's going to put all this together. Oh, this is a good Red card. Red Plunder run from Arsenal giving plus three and the on-hit trigger. This is this is the turn you have to go for it. Yeah, yeah this it is looks definitely like we're the setting up a big turn here. Shackle number nine. This attack's going to have go again. Yeah. Plunder run pitched from hand. Going to get a couple of resources, and we're getting the party started. Yeah, it's got to be a Red Rift Bind here, and you just basically say, I hope you don't have snag in your hand. Yeah, this looks like, what is this, plus six? This is um, one, two, three from the non-attacks, and then it's three from the plunder run. So yeah, plus six makes this a nine-attack rift bind. 
right? And we've got an on hit here, draw a card as well, and that's going to be for the entire turn, too. That's, that's correct. Anything that hits next will draw him a card. Uh, he's pitching here to stop the uh, rune chant damage. Only one of those um, Seeds of Agony is actually triggered. It's the red one that he played second. The blue one is waiting in the wings for a zero attack to come across the board. Tyler weighing his options here. Uh, this is only being turn. This is a oh, triple no. block. He's going to have to commit point. and just everything after this is is damage. Everything uh, after this is damage. Because he said a little cart blush. He's just going to have his way. Yeah. So the light is green for Sebastiano here. It is time to go. It is time to get in as much damage as you possibly can here. This is your spot, and Tyler is resigned yep. to take what's going on here. This is another gigantic rift bind. His, his only blocks available right now are pitching that one resource, and he's choosing to do it to stop the arcane. Um, he could have done it to play the phantasmal out there. He can block once with the um, arcanite skull cap, but it, it's basically just whatever you have is what you're going to deal me damage for. Looks like maybe... Razor on top, giving right. it go again this way. He's considering his arsenal card, so maybe it is something they could possibly... Play. I'm not really sure, but this is a Razor Reflex on top of the Riff Run, making sure that just tons and tons of damage is going to come in here. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a ton of... That is, by the way, the last Razor Reflex. The other two were banished, but he's just going to have to take whatever is left, including... And there's the, the card draw. Including a third Rift Bind, I believe, is, is in there. A yellow one. Yeah, I do think there is one more Rift Bind in there. It's really towards the top of the screen. Kind of hard to see, but Tyler's going down to 24 this turn, and this turn is not over. No, and it's it's not it remotely over because he can still play cards from hand. He can still pop the Snapdragon Scalers. It's, it, it's going to be insane. I was about to say, yeah, the Snapdragon Scalers so important here, giving that go again. These are the turns that really, really get the games done with for Chain, and, that, and those, those Scalers so important, giving yet another go again in these turns so this is where you started getting the gigantic gigantic boards like here are seats at the bottom of the deck very important for what's going to be about two turns from now when he gets to the bottom of his deck unhallowed rights coming across for four and he's just got to take it he's just got to drop to 20. i mean he can what, what can he do he can he can pitch there to block one yeah, and just bl double block there he has less life so now it does block three out of four yep absolutely he did use the resource point there as well off of the tunic so Maybe incentivize the block with a tunic here as well sometime soon, going down to 23, but this looks like this is going to close the chain. So he's choosing not to use the Snapdragon Scalers, assuming that he wants to arsenal this last card um, and setting up for something a little bit bigger, perhaps next turn. Absolutely. So this looks like it's going to take, what, four blood debt here this turn? It would appear to be four. It's a little difficult to tell. Oh, and it was a Command and Conquer. He's keeping it in hand because he wants to... Just play max protection, I guess, against any possible counterplay over the next turn or two, which is very smart. But you have the tempo now. You're banishing nine, nine cards off the top of your deck. Yeah, I like the idea of possibly holding back because you just don't want Herald of Judgment to come in and make it to where you can't play cards from Banish. You know, one of those big on-hit effects that could all of a sudden turn the game around, sure. no matter what the life totals are. All right, this is a big banish. What is that? Four seeds and two rift finds plus the eclipse. We might see Ursa oh, this turn. This is a definite Ursa turn. He left the Snapdragon Scalers up for a turn like this, and this, this could close the entire game out. I was just about to say, this might be a finals winning turn, depending on the hand that Tyler has here. If he has enough defensive reactions, he might be able to survive. You know, we can do a lot of extra uh, defense here, but if it's just a bunch of heralds, he's doing even less than those. So... His light total's at 23. I have seen turns with less cards than this get into the 30s from the chain player. It's at the point, too, where you we have not seen a snag get pitched or played. That's a very good point. And if he does have a snag, this is the perfect turn because you want to set up that Urser and you want to throw. He, he drew into, into the Banish, as far as that's concerned, several Rift Binds on this turn. If you do end up having the snag, that's a that's a game-winning play. Oh, absolutely. I think this is going to be the biggest turn and the most important thing in the game is, is there a snag in Tyler's hand this turn? Because this is about to hurt really, really bad. Arclight Sentinel's another out that you could possibly do some dancing around because, again, there's no um, time snap potion established, uh, and that would certainly stop the turn dead in its tracks. He's jamming down two seeds. And Tyler does have a hand here along with an arsenal card, too, so... Decent chance there's at least one of those cards that really makes a big difference here. Now this Red is Howl from Beyond. Howl from Beyond. Resource point floating. 
where are we going to start here? We got another seeds in the yard. If you just want to pump up your refines to max, but maybe, maybe he's snag is on his mind here. Sure, and I think it has to be. I think you have to consider the possibility that if they if they play snag, I could just be wasting all of this. And at that point, I think you have to ask yourself the question: If they have snag, can I win anyway? You know, if I don't win this turn. Am I going to have enough to win the following turn? Because I'm right. trying to Ursur this turn. So, like, this is a good question. Is when do you when do you play around Snag, or when do you just say, I just hope you don't have it? Right. Even if Snag does come down here, by the way, um, this Riftbind is still coming in for six because Snag turns off Riftbind's effect from itself, but it does still get the buff from Hal from Beyond. So it's still a threatening attack, no matter what what way you slice it. This is one of those scenarios where, as a uh, Prism player, and as we've seen Tyler time and time again be able to get himself out of these tricky situations, you're still very worried because there's still a lot of damage on the table. I'm a big body language guy. Does this look like a guy that's got a snag to you? I'm looking at this. He's kind of moving around a little slowly, I, checking his arsenal card a lot. I didn't want to mention it, but yes, it does not look like that is a possible play line. Um, unless he's absolutely double bluffing like a champ. We are in Vegas. This is a good city to bluff him. It's the time to do it, right? He's just going to throw down a three block. It looks like we're going to have a block here. Is there a defensive reaction behind this? It looks like there's going to be... There's the Snapdragon Dragon Scalers giving a go again. Now, don't forget, we still got more go against possibly this turn as well. And look, this is the defensive reaction behind this. This is a fate foretold. Fate foreseen coming down, blocking four on top of the three. Uh, this does, I believe, full block it. No, I think it pushes up over eight so this would probably take one in this point three plus three plus two right it makes it eight so he ends up likely taking one damage here yeah i don't know many of any of the arcane has actually been uh triggered yet off these seeds i don't believe i don't so. think, I think so either took that arcane and any cards you can get out of his hand right now very important because you want to try to get any damage you can get through even if the arcane get through yeah. no resource points left over means no way to stop the arcane damage that's right there's a two card hand left for blocking and tyler's just shaking his head saying this is this is not going to go well going forward. Oh, and I, I think Sebastiano smells blood. Oh, yeah. He's, that, he immediately grabbed and clutched onto those seeds in uh, Banish Zone. He's, he understands. He knows that he can uh, play just completely free and open. No snag came down. I can just play these next two Rift Binds for maximum damage. All right. Rift Bind number one. This will have go again because of the 10th Soul Shackle being made this turn. This is a gigantic Rift Bind alongside some Arcane and... I, I've got to say this. I'm trying not to call it early, but with that body language, this might be a tournament winning turn. Uh, Tyler does not look comfortable. Riftbind for seven and two arcane, and it could be one of those scenarios where he literally in his hand has two cards that can't block for anything. Could be like genesis. two. It could be a genesis and a uh, you know parable of humility or something like that that you just can't do anything with. There's no card in your soul that you can pitch a yellow to generate some sort of a spectral shield. And he is a soul shield and maybe just one card that can't do anything. Yeah, so soul shield is going to be pitched for resources. Looks like a double oh. block here. Oh, look at this. He did have a, uh, a four block card in the form of impenetrable belief and a herald of protection. But that's it. That's, that's, the, that's the entirety of his hand. And so, again, carte blanche here. The light is green. It's time to go. How much more damage can Sebastiano deal this turn? Because was that a full block on that rift bind? It looks like we're down to one. And here we go, Rift Bind. Could be another Rift Bind for seven. Rift Bind for seven, it looks like here. So it looks like that seven's going to get through. We're going to get a little bit of a block here. Block at one on the skull cap. So, and and there comes the Eclipse. Yep. Here comes Ursa. We're down to 14. This Ursa is going to come in for another six. Yep, free six. Actually, I don't believe he had the action point to attack there with right, that yeah, one. You're, you're so in that instance, he's just creating it and is moving right along. He is going to take some blood debt. He takes uh, what looks like three or four blood debt. Looks like he only takes three. Nope, it is four blood debt. So this life total game is very close. He's going to tick up the tunic and most likely pass. I don't think he has a card in hand. Yeah, Tyler going down to 14 here, but he's going to have to pass the turn. Can't attack the Ursa because there was no cards at hand. Going back up to four, and we're back over to Sebastiano. Does Sebastiano. Here we go, the rest. Uh, yeah, look at this. There's the not even deck. there's not even ten cards to banish, and of those, there's one that can be played. So it's it's actually just down to this. Immediately <laughs> down to this. He's at fourteen life. Can he prevent four and look he's shaking his head like he realizes. I think he. Uh, this looks like better body language the last turn. I think Tyler thinks he's got it possibly here. Well, it's either that or he thinks it's over. Uh, yeah, this is true. This he realizes though that whatever's on on the play is is all that there is. Playing down the last 
Howe from beyond. And this could be the final turn of the calling here in Las Vegas. Considering the Soul Shackle, he does have four in Banished. He can always go in, and I think he has a blue Unhallowed right, so he could fetch like a Seeds and put it on. He does have a yellow Rift Bind. He's got a Bounding Demogon. He's going to come in with coming in with that red Unhallowed right. He's going to go get a Seeds, put it on the bottom. Yeah, this has Go again from the Soul Shackle. And by the way, that's just oh, a that's casual a seven. Is, is that a, did he get a, a another Howl from Beyond? beyond. Yeah. That's smart, too. A lot of extra damage here. Oh, no, but look at his hand. I think it's just three reds. It's definitely Command and Conquer. It looks like a Ghostly Visit red, and then whatever that Seeds is in his hand. He's going to block three. And, and, and four for the Sink Below for seven total. Two cards left in hand. Doesn't and look like he wants to do anything with them. We know there's going to be a six attack coming. This is incredibly tense. It is literally just down to if Chain can close the game right now. It is absolutely silent in this corner of the room. I don't hear a single player making a noise over there. Making Everyone is super tense. Making a rune chant, trying to split up his damage. He's putting it on the um, Urser, probably because he's just going to attack with the Urser. Send six plus the rune chant. And looks like that's exactly what he's doing. Trying to just eke out anything he possibly can for this turn because it looks like he's he's understood that he just can't close the game this turn. He's gonna have another turn. Urser's coming across for six and one point of arcane. Let's see, can Tyler block this all with one card or is he gonna take both the cards? It is gonna take both of the cards out of his hand. I think you're more than happy to do the both cards here. Um, I think you're more than happy to block for seven as well. You can take one point of arcane. Those go to the bottom. Yep. Turn is over. And drawing back up to four here, so a couple more cards coming in. So he will have resources to continue to play and some of these cards from the banish zone. The tunic tick up to three might be the literal perfect time to have one resource floating for a phantasmal or for stopping an arcane point. There's 14 left. 14 life left. That's all he has to do is hold on to 14 life and watch the chain player play out the remaining cards in his hand. Yeah, so 14 life, putting up a barrier here. 14 life, all that stands between Sebastiano and that trophy, putting another trophy in the ch in, for Chain, or is he not going to be able to finish here? And Prism is going to show everybody that maybe Chain isn't the best deck. Maybe this is the deck that people should be playing to level the playing field. Well, if you could play like Tyler, yeah. maybe so. <laughs> Absolutely. Tyler's been play, just putting on a master class this entire weekend. All right, so look, there's this Hell from Beyond that we saw earlier. It's coming into play. It's got one resource point floating. But Taking up to 12. Gonna make this coming in for six. This Urser is going to be having go again as well. Along with the Rune Chant token. Is that Hell from Beyond played prior? Or was that played? It looks like it was. All right, lining up at the block here. It looks like a two-card block possibly coming from Tyler. He's going to reconsider a little bit. Yeah, it looks like a two-card block here. Blocking for six. Like, here comes the Command and Conquer. It's going to trigger this rune chant. Command coming across for six. Another six. No defense reaction, so that may trick up some stuff here. If there are defense reactions in hand, he may just end up taking six plus one. And look at Sebastiano, please, just just take this. It's okay. You can just take this. Even if, honestly, he might. He might just say, okay. Looks like we're going to line up some blocks here with the equipment. Being at less life total, he's going to be able to use the skull hip. This looks like a quadruple just block. and he just give everything. block. Because of the Howl from Beyond coming across for nine. He still just blocks six and takes one, I think, right? Yeah, I think so. It looks like, yeah, down to 13. Got to feel great about yourself if you're Tyler there, only taking one that turn. Yeah, and again, we have this scenario where you're going to take some blood debt. You have the same, basically the same cards in hand. You're going to have uh, six power Urser making an attack. Carrion Husk is gone, and that is going to start ticking down this game. Carrion Husk, of course, is destroyed on the start of uh, Sebastian's turn because he has less than 14 life. I 
All right, Soul Shackle get, uh, getting go again here for the Urser. 13 Soul Shackles, double block. His deck has cards for days. He's more than comfortable just playing down two blocks here. All right, looks like we have the Seeds getting cast from I think, the Vanish Zone here. I think this is the last Gasp turn. I think this is that moment where we just try to throw things down. Make it the Rune Chant, trying to split the damage. We've got two sources of Arcane. And there's the blue Unhallowed Rites. Not what you want to see, a blue Unhallowed Rites. It is going to go fetch a uh, Red Howl from beyond, but again, it's really not what you want to see. All right, so three sources of damage coming in here. A little physical from the Unhallowed Rites. Two different sources of Arcane as well. Let's see, how does Tyler want to do this? He has a snag, but there's no real point at this point for the snag. Now you just use it for resources, pure value of pitching two, throwing the block out with the last resource there. Stopping one of the two points of, of damage, and of course stopping both of those arcane sources. So it looks like this is going to be possibly it for the turn. That is a Howl from Beyond. That is the last card of the deck, so that's what's going to be drawn. Along with the Tremors coming back to hand. So it looks like Tyler, going to go back to Tyler's turn. It's like Down to three cards. He takes a Blood Dead, of course, from the uh, Carrion Husk as well. So that's literally the clock for the game. Yeah, he's down to nine here. All right, we're going to Soul Shackle. Up to 14. Another six. Make sure that we can get go again here on Urser. And you know what? Depending on Tyler's hand, he could run into an issue where he runs into multiple uh, auras in his hand, and he can't actually block six. So this game isn't quite over in that scenario. Yeah, there is that little glimmer of hope here for Sebastiano. You're just hoping uh, you know, maybe Tyler bricked out a little too much on his hand here. But nope. No, he didn't. He can block six here. Yep. Double block from a hand from Tyler. There's the Howl from Beyond that he fetched earlier. Probably going to consider playing that Yellow Rift Bind. All right, he's going to go ahead and make a Rune Chant here as well. And you got to believe one of these cards. There we go. Coming in from the Banish Zone. Looks like that looked like a defensive reaction here. It just looked like Snag says no to the uh, plus one on the Bounding Demagon. Bounding Demagon, by the way, coming in for free, so you don't have to worry about it. Pitching a second Snag to stop. Uh, the one rune chant, I would imagine. But this is still going to, I mean, if, if he's got no card to block with, it's still going to pump through a good portion of damage. A sink below an arsenal. Let's say this is, this is what's been sitting there for the last few turns. Huge play here from Tyler to be able to soak up even more of that damage and keep his light total yeah, high. Barely taking any damage on that turn. And it's two cards, it's one Rift Bind, and it's one Urser. This Urser has been on the board for like, Six turns. <laughs> Crazy. By far the longest Urser I've ever seen him play. Tyler going to draw back up to four cards. He's down to ten here. Sebastiano on seven. He's taking at least at least one blood debt every turn, but we see at least one more card left in the banish zone over there with that rift find. Fifteen. Here we go. I've never seen fifteen soul shackles. I know that for a fact. We Six blocks. Three. Single block here on maybe, Urser. Maybe this is the turn where he just doesn't have the cards in hand to be able to block. But honestly... I don't know if Sebastian has enough cards in hand to present lethal threats. Yeah, that Rift Bind actually doesn't do a ton here. He does have the Halfer Beyond to kind of help pump up quite a bit, but he needs the resources as well to play yeah. his cards. That's a three-pitch play. This could be one of those scenarios where now I just have to pitch and Nebula Blade for one and threatening one uh, Rune Chant creation. Yeah, I think he's coming to that same realization. It looks like it here. Deciding what to pitch here. To make some resources. Taking his time. Can't blame him. Pitching blue. Making a rune chant. Does it look like last gasp. Throwing down that rift bind. Coming across for just two. Plus one. It looks like Tyler's just going to take this. He's certainly considering it. Dropping him to four. And of course the uh, blood debt on Carrion Husk dropping as well. Sebastian down to six. What, two cards in play and an, and an Urser. That's literally it. He has two cards in his hand, Tyler does. Yeah, Tyler, so maybe he's going to be able... All right, so Sigil of here. Solace gaining three. So I wonder if he found a way to attack this Urser. It doesn't doesn't look like it. Yep, there we go. And that, that might just seal the I deal. I think that is going to be a championship-winning play. He's going to blow up the Urser here. 
Oh, and here we go. Get the judges involved on what exactly happens here. We've had a couple judge calls on uh, on hit effects along with Urser. Sure. Along this weekend, so. And honestly, it doesn't it doesn't really end up mattering in the grand scheme of things because by destroying this Urser, you're saying you have to kill me from seven with um, a trimmer of Arathiel and one other card. In, in this it scenario, it's created a Spectral Shield. Sending that Spectral Shield out of me blocks it with the um, Grasp of the Arknight. It wouldn't be a typical Tyler game if we didn't get at least one Spectral Shield. That's right. Drawing a full grip of four. Your opponent has two cards in hand. One Carrion Husk, hitting them for one each turn. Nebula Blade for one, and a Rune Chant. It's never going to hit because the Spectral is up. But he's going to pay for it nonetheless. Play, pay for the uh, Phantasmal Footsteps. And there's the last card. Coming across for four. Does he just take it, take his two-card grip, and try to throw six damage at his opponent? I mean, you're going to know the entire concept of his hand. The trimmer is going to come back. You know how much defense is left here. Tyler, just I, I would take as much time as I possibly could here just to make sure I get everything right, and Tyler's rightfully doing that himself. You can, you can see the writing on the wall. He can taste that trophy in his hands. Takes three, goes to yep. four. Looks like he's going to take three, go down to four. I think this is it. I think this is going to be the last turn. Yeah, he's moving a little bit quicker here. This is, this is the speed of a man who knows that he's just won his championship. Just play a six attack Herald. No, he's going he's gonna to jam down a Genesis. Oh, my goodness. Come in with a one for Genesis. Yeah, attack for one. This is going to put Sebastiano down to four. Uh, threatening to die from his own blood debt really, really soon, too. Drawing up. He's got one card. There's nothing he can do. Yeah, he's going to pass back to Tyler. And Tyler going to take his time here for just a second. Line things up. Just make sure everything's just right. But this looks like this is going to be the play to decide the calling Sinking here. Sinking off a of Genesis. Sinking off Genesis. Making a Spectral Shield token. Coming, he could come across with both the Spectral Shield and the Genesis and make another Spectral Shield. And look, he's going to realize at, at those two attacks plus the blood debt damage is going to end the game. It's over. Tyler picks up the win at the Calling Las Vegas. Coming with the heart on the screen, we have a champion for the Calling Las Vegas, and it is Tyler Horsepool with Prism. With Prism. Absolutely. I love seeing the emotion of him winning that, you know, hand over his face, gives the heart to the crowd at home. You know, he's winning this for more than just himself. There's so many people in the chat that wanted to see Chain get dethroned. They wanted to see Prism win for all those Prism fans at home. And for Tyler, unreal victory. Unreal victory for Tyler this weekend, playing amazing in all of his games. Every game that I got to cast of him this weekend, I was impressed more and more with his play, more yes. and more with his deck. Yes. You and I have talked about this. I have a new favorite deck in this format. I can't wait to play it when I get I home. I am absolutely floored by this result. This is fantastic. What a way to finish the biggest flesh and blood tournament ever. Then with a Prism win, no one expected this. Absolutely. No not. one called I, this. I definitely didn't. And if you think you called this, <laughs> congratulations, you did. <laughs> you called it correctly. That is incredible. And we have a 2021 Calling Las Vegas champion. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely. And tell you what, we're going to be back in just a minute. We're going to take a very small, short break. Oh, actually, we're going to be doing this live. It uh, I'll like, take I it apologize. live. It you know like what? Live. I'll do it live. That's fine. Because we have, look at this, we have the trophy. I don't know if you saw this. They set Ooh. the trophy down, and we have the man himself. I'm going to swap out. He's going to swap in. This is it, the man of the hour. Hey, Tyler, you got to put your mask on. Yeah. Probably for the best. Yeah, for the best. All right, Tyler, first and foremost, absolutely congratulations this weekend. I think this belongs to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> they had this on the table for the longest time, making us nervous. Yeah, absolutely. Make <laughs> sure you put it in the middle here somewhere so it doesn't fall over. Yeah. I, I would feel so bad if I broke that for you. But absolutely, hey, man, congratulations. Great thank play you. all this week. I think you overheard us kind of closing it out there at the very end. Yeah, I yeah. was impressed all weekend long with your play and your deck choice. How did you come to that? So uh, <laughs> this is going to be a funny story, and I swear this isn't uh, throwing shade, but okay. uh, listening to Arsenal pass, they kept saying, Prism's bad, Prism's bad, Prism's bad. And I was like, I, you know what? In my testing, uh, I was smashing most of my matchups except for Chain, and then um, when I 
with my sideboard, I was able to fix the chain matchup. I played eight chains this weekend, and I only lost to one. You played it eight times? Eight chains, so yeah. So you're seven and one. Seven and one versus chain. All right, chain. let's talk a little bit about that. What were these sideboard cards that made you win seven out of your eight matches versus chain? So uh, things that aren't things that aren't considered is that almost everything in Prism blocks for three, similar to Bravo. And uh, so when you add all these defense reactions and the sigils, uh, it keeps you at such a high life total. And then the snag, you have basically six snags because you get Arclight Sentinel right. to stop their uh, Rift Bind turns. And so um, the important th I think the important thing that a lot of people are missing is that you kind of want to wait for them to start playing stuff right. to Arclight and not just Arclight keep all your stuff in your Banish. So. And I think that was a big thing for me that was super impressive with you all weekend was your patience. I actually wrote it down as a note while I was watching one of your match. Your patience was unreal going into some of the spots. I saw you like, you know, over committing in some parts, but you know, taking your step a step back and realizing I can take some damage here to set myself up a little bit for more turns. And is that something that you would tell people at home that want to pick up your deck? Is that a really important thing for them to learn? Abso absolutely. If um it's it's uh there's a big there's a big skill gap to this deck, I think, and uh it mostly is just on that. How much patience and how much discipline you have to figure out what's a block and what's not, and some of that just comes from knowing other people's decks. Absolutely, that's a big thing as well. It yeah. seemed like you actually knew your matchups really well, and I wanted to bring that up. Your other matchups, I saw you playing its control matchups quite a bit, you know, more of the control mirror. Yeah. And honestly, I felt like you were never really in jeopardy of losing those <laughs> matches while we were on camera. Your spectral seals were just going so wide that their blocking was just so bad. Yeah. Yeah, um, the... Uh, when I was, whenever I was playing a non-chain matchup, uh, uh, I can think of a Bravo matchup that I was on camera for. Um, that was basically what was happening this weekend was the Spectral Shields were just getting out of control. And that's what you want to do as a Prism is, uh, um, you know, throw a, an aura over here and, you, and they have to kill it. And if they can't attack you twice, or even if they can, you're going to keep building up those uh, Spectral Shields and so they can't handle that anymore. Absolutely. Anything you want to say to all the chain players at home? <laughs> I'm sorry, but your reign is over. Yeah, your days are probably numbered. Yeah. Again, Tyler, thank you so much for being here this weekend. Great win. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And hey, tell you what, I got one more little present for you. I think this is one of the things that people were looking forward to oh. the most this weekend. I actually don't even want to touch this anymore, so I'm going to hand it right over to you. Here you go. Here's your golden tunic. Thank you so much. Oh, I don't even know what the camera's right there. There we go. Yeah, straight ahead of us. Yeah. Yep. And awesome. uh, big shout out to everybody at home and Top Deck Keep in Riverside, California. Well, big shout out to you for winning this week. Congratulations on being the first giant North American calling winner and the winner of the biggest one ever. Oh, okay. yeah. It feels, I don't know what I'm going to do. So. Yeah, <laughs> hey, you're in Vegas. You could probably figure something out. But that's yeah, going to do true. it for us here from the Flesh and Blood Calling here in Las Vegas. Thank you for watching all weekend long. Tyler, congratulations again. We'll see you all real soon. Okay, absolutely. We're going to actually talk about the event schedule for one second just before we close out so you can make sure that you get a chance to hoist that trophy yourself or get yourself one of those golden tunics sometime in the future. You see the next calling is going to be in Dallas, Fort Worth. That is October 15th through 17th, and that is Tales of Aria Seal. That'll be at the Fort Worth Convention Center. The next one after that, if you missed that one, that's going to be the calling in Cincinnati from October 22nd through 24th. That's going to be the Duke Energy Convention Center. Again, that one is Tales of Aria Sealed. And last but not least, the same weekend you're getting to double up here. You're getting a twofer. You're getting the national championships at the United States of America featuring the calling at Orlando. So the calling during that one is going to be the classic constructed, but you're also going to get that at November 5th through 7th, along with that national championship format that hasn't been determined just yet, but make sure you keep up. That's going to be announced real soon. Uh, for everybody here working with Channel Fireball, everybody behind the scenes, we thank you very much for watching this weekend, and we'll see you all real soon.